be here. It's, uh, I think, that the, dis the discussion between hype and reality um, for five years ago, if you had mentioned you're going to have somebody from the Hip Hop Caucus uh, on a panel behind somebody from the White House, <laughs> <laughs> you would have said, uh, hype. <laughs> <laughs> So I can attest to things that might not look one way, but they are. Let me say this, the one in the room here who's actually better at this, and I would encourage you to talk to him, is probably Tom Bacote. I don't know what Tom is. Where is Tom? Tom is way in the back. Tom, stand up back there so they can see who you are. Tom is our Vice President of Policy at the Hip Hop Caucus, and I would encourage all of those um, who are as uh, as as Stalworth worth and know the need for fair elections to, to join with us in, in, in this campaign. I want to definitely thank the Brennan Center um, for inviting me in this process. It's, a, it's an honor. I want to just take a quick thing that I wasn't going to say, that as part of being the President of the Hip Hop Caucus, I'm also an activist. Um, uh, before I did Vote or Die uh, with P. Diddy, and if you still have a T-shirt, that's wonderful. Um, <laughs> Um, before that, um, before we did this, my vote campaign this past election cycle, um, we registered 32,000 people in one day. Um, before that, I've always been an activist and a minister. Um, and I was a, a chaplain in the Air Force. And I had begun to speak out against what uh, the, the reason that we're here. Um, the, when people can get in office, it's literally a life or death issue. This is not a game. Uh, when you can assume to that position um, and be in that position of power, the decisions you make literally are life and death. Uh, there are now thousands of American soldiers. My job as a chaplain was to bury soldiers. And so seeing soldiers come home and being in that position, it's life and death. For the millions of Iraqis who have now lost their homes and who are now dead, um, this process of ensuring that we have fair elections so that we can have the people in power who are about the people's business and not about corporations' business or this who has the most money um, is very serious, as we have seen for the past eight years. So with that, um, obviously as an activist, I just want to make a shout out, as we say in hip hop. Um, um, being an activist was very outspoken, obviously for, you might hear in the drawl in my voice, I'm originally from Louisiana as well. So being outspoken for people who were in the Gulf Coast and Katrina, and obviously against this war, uh, my lawyer, uh, when I would get in trouble <laughs> and speak out, be there to protect me against the big guy was the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. And I always I just want to make a piece to Moni Sloan, who's here in the audience, who helped and would be there fighting for the little guy. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs> it's very important. If she was not here, I would not be here. <laughs> so that's, that's very serious. Y'all might not understand how important that is. Let me say this in regards to what I want to discuss about this process. In the past election cycle, the reason this issue is so important, and I'm so glad that we have a new president, and that's wonderful, and a new Congress, uh, Republicans and Democrats and independents, it's fantastic. But for a man and a person of color, um, the right to vote is very deep. And I just want to make sure at this moment, um, this uh, evoke the names of those who gave their lives. Uh, James Cheney, Eldridge Cleaver, Medgar Evers, Andrew Goodman, Fannie Lou Hamer, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Thurgood Marshall, A. Philip Randolph, Rosa Parks, Michael Swinner, those who've given their lives just so that men and women of color, women, people of bisexual, lesbian, um, Native Americans, Latinos, Latinas, 
could have the right to vote in this land called America. And so the discussion we're having today is not simply a discussion, simply to, to discuss about the data, which is so critical, but it's a discussion that people have given their lives for. So we can be in a moment, so there could be possibly a person of color, which we now have in the White House, hopefully one day a woman in the White House, and hopefully one day maybe somebody who is lesbian or gay, bisexual, transgender, and open about it in the White House. So everybody in this country can be who they need to be. And the reason that this discussion is important is we're moving from in that day they had a poll tax. And for those who might not know, a poll tax was a voting fee charge to reduce the numbers of blacks eligible to vote. That was the way. So now, in that process, it was put forth that a poll tax. So if you would come to vote, they would put forth a poll tax. And at that time, many of you who were still who were around at that time understood Jim Crow. And Jim Crow was very powerful. And it was used to cut away from voting. But today, my generation, the YouTube, MySpace, Twitter, Facebook generation, is not fighting Jim Crow. We're not fighting to end a poll tax. As a matter of fact, Jim Crow was beaten. But like you had children, so did Jim Crow. 